through the day. Well, almost halfway through the week. It's just the beginning, but we can do it. Got up at least. That's half the bell right there. So it is Wednesday, September 13th. And we have math interventions today. Um, Nothing else real different today. Just normal stuff. I'm going to try to get through a little more Go Math today. Maybe combine a couple lessons because... Through the number sense activities I've done the last few weeks, we have talked about addition strategies and have done addition things. So I'm thinking I can maybe skip over a couple of chapters because it's just repeat of what we've already done. I've got this really cool little addition book. And if I can grab it out of my drawer here. These little drawer units are awesome. These things here. And I put, <laughs> they're kind of open from yesterday. That's not it. Um, let's see if I can find it. Nope, that's not it. Yeah, here it is. I want to say these came from Sarah Cooley on TPT, and um, it's addition stories, and it's really cute. I just made a double booklet just to make my life easier and not have to cut things. So you just go through different strategies through here. So I think we might do this today, along with the Go Math lesson. And I love how she has Gus the plus guy and Linus the minus guy, and I have a subtraction book too. So we'll do that another time when we get to chapter two, which will be probably not next week, but the week after. So I think that'll be good. Um, I'm trying to think what I was going to say. Blah. I think Caitlin, my daughter, is going to start Gamers Club today after school. So I will have another 30 minutes that I can do something. I think I'm going to run to Target today because it's not too far from her school. Give me a little shopping time to get a few things that I need. Hopefully I'll be successful and quick. Um, not too sure there's really much else to tell you other than... Hope you're going to have a wonderful day. And let me show you my outfit. I've got a kind of tank dress on here with different kinds of stripes, which you will see more of when I back up. And then since I'm wearing this little denim vest thingy, I didn't wear a necklace because it covers up the dress mostly anyway and it kind of get in the way. I've got these bigger earrings on since I'm not wearing a necklace. And I'm finally back into wearing my watches. I have lots of watches. I've been collecting them for a long time. But when I was on my scooter with my hurt foot, I didn't wear my watches because they would get kind of get in the way when I was doing stuff. So I didn't really wear bracelets or watches. I just basically wore earrings and a ring because the other stuff just kind of got in the way. Necklaces would bang around. And so I just kind of went very simple on jewelry then. So I'm getting back into it. So yeah, I've just got these like different toned. I've got like a, I don't know, a burnished kind of color. Gunmetal, gray, and silver earrings. And then this watch, I think I got this from... It was either Kohl's.com or Target. Probably Kohl's. I got a lot of my watches from Kohl's way back when I was buying watches. I don't really buy watches anymore because, you know, you get so many. There's only so many you can wear. One tip about watches, though, that I will give you that I do is to pull the stem when you're finished wearing your watch. If you're a person that doesn't wear the same watch every day, pull the stem because you'll save your battery. Because there's no point in it just running the battery down when you're not wearing the watch. It's kind of silly and expensive. So then I've got um, this kind of twisty bracelet thing. It all came in one glob. I really don't remember where I got this. Probably Kato. It's where a lot of my jewelry comes from. And then my Alex and Andy pineapple bracelet. So, and then this ring is a Lottie Dottie, and I've got my initial in there, my J. I will back up so you can see the rest of the outfit. Oh, let me show you my shoes real quick, though. So I cannot fall over. They're just some little silver shoes from Fashion Bug, which I don't even think that store exists anymore. So that tells you how old that is. I used to go to that store in a town that's about an hour away and get a lot of my clothes there, but then they closed down. And I'm not even sure that they're online anymore. I think they just disappeared. So let me back up. Hopefully I won't run into a desk this time. Back up so you can see my dress. It's a long, goes down to my ankles. So it's a maxi dress. Oop, just tripped on the rug. Okay, so backing up, backing up, backing up. So you can see how long the dress is. Ooh, very long. Okay, I'll come a little forward and you can see what it looks like here. So that's my little outfit for well, today. Tomorrow is picture day. So I have what I've got to wear picked out in my brain. I just don't have it laid out because the cats like to lay on my clothes when I'm gone. So I've learned not to leave them out because they will sleep on them and get them all hairy and wrinkled. So I'll just get that together when I get home. But I know exactly what I'm going to pick for my shoes and my jewelry and everything. So that's Half the battle, yes. So it won't take long to prep things for tomorrow. Picture day is always crazy because you never know what time your class is going to go to get their pictures. 
They don't call you on the intercom. They have a PTA mom come to your door and say, are you ready? And you're like, uh, sure. <clears throat> so kids, get lined up. Let's make sure you don't have any syrup on your face from breakfast or whatever. Thankfully, we don't have PE tomorrow. I've had times where we had PE and we had picture day after recess or PE and that's not a good thing because they get all sweaty and gross. Ugh. We have to try to, you know, at least from here up, make them look decent. So whew. we have library tomorrow and surely our pictures will be done before our recess time at 1.30. They try to get them done before lunch. That way it's just in and out and done. So, and I like to get my picture done before school starts because trying to get your picture taken while your class is standing there is not always good because you can't monitor them. You can't be like, okay, I see you over there. So yeah, I try to go up there like right after I get set up in the classroom, I just zip up there to the gym is where they set up. Yeah. I know what that place is called. Come on. And then um, I'm done. And that doesn't give me the opportunity to get my hair messed up much or my face or anything like that. So it's always good. And then I get out of the way and I'm done and I can just monitor the kids. I was thinking that I would take a little game to play with them when they were finished getting their pictures. Because what happens is they all stand in a long line. They go one at a time to get their little cheesy picture taken. I've been telling them to practice their most beautiful, wonderful first grade smile so that they're ready for pictures. And they showed me their smiles yesterday and they all looked wonderful. So I think they're ready. But then they send them over and then you just kind of have to keep them occupied until the whole class gets their picture taken. Which, I mean, I don't know how else they would do it. But... I thought I might take a little trivia game. I do have like a first grade trivia game that I could grab if I remember. Normally we just play like the mirror me game and I'll do a couple of actions and I'll choose another student and they'll do a couple of actions and the class does what they do. But some of them get a little out of control squirrely and I don't really want that to happen. So I'd rather them just kind of chill because we do have to go back and learn something after picture day. <laughs> so I'd rather them not be maniacs whenever they come back to the classroom. So yeah, I think I'll grab that out so I can remember it tomorrow. And uh, I wanted to shout out Ruth from Detroit Teacher Life. Um, my friend from in Detroit, of course, um, she got some kind of stinky news yesterday from her principal. Apparently a parent complained about her videos. And so she's been told that she can no longer post videos on her channel about school. And I don't know if they really are allowed to do that legally. I don't know. I don't know what the rules are. I know education things are pretty sticky because, you know, privacy issues and whatever. <clears throat> and I know teachers are kind of held to a higher standard than a lot of other professions. I mean, a lot of other professions can do things on their own time that we can't, which fair, unfair, that's just the way it is. But I just wanted to um, just let her know that I love her and I'm thinking about her. And I think her situation is stinky. And if you could just maybe send some love to her. She's had to make her videos private now, unfortunately. But I think that you can still email her, possibly. Or maybe um, contact her through Facebook. If you just look for Ruth Charlton from Detroit on Facebook, you might be able to find her there. Otherwise, if you want to comment below this video some sentiments for her, I can send them on to her because I think I can still contact her through our teacher tuber Facebook group that's closed. But I can send on your sentiments if you're not able to send them on to her. If you'd like to give her well wishes or thoughts or whatever, I'd be happy to send those on for her. But <clears throat> I just thought that was cruddy and she was very, very upset and I understand that. And I just wish that I could have given her a hug, like not a cyber hug, but a real hug because I think she could really use some friends right now. So if you can send her some love somehow, I know she would appreciate that. All right, I'm going to get back to work here because the kids will be here in about 12 minutes. And I've always got things I can do. You know how that is. There's never a dull moment in school. So I will catch you later. Hi, this is the first time I've gotten a chance to vlog since this morning. Wow. So during my plan time when the students had specials, I had a meeting with the HOPE team which is what we call our kind of intervention team. It's where we go to discuss students of concern for whatever reason, academic or behavior, whatever. And so we just learned about the process and how we recommend them for the team and the steps that we take to put them on that team, whatever, and different things that we can do. It was productive, it was a good thing, and they gave us time to think about how we wanted to place our students and which students we wanted to put on the list to kind of watch. So we had time to do that. 
that was really nice, but I had no planned time because of it. <laughs> so that was kind of stinky, but that happens. And we're going to meet again sometime. So I guess I'll need to be prepared for another lost plan time. That happens lots. And then we had a fire drill this afternoon when I was trying to have reading groups. Eh. Thankfully, before that happened, we had gotten most everything done for that little section of the day. I explained the center wheel to them, which is that thing over there, right there. It's the center wheel. I've already grouped the students. I've got their names on the different colors so they know what color they are and what the wheel pieces mean. So Monday we'll start that full fledge. I still need to take these center boxes that are here and here and empty them of the spring things and put the fall things in there. Ah, but I had no plan time today, so there was no time to do it. So I'm not sure if I'll get to do it tomorrow or what, but it needs to be done by Monday. So I'm gonna get it done somehow. And then, yeah, the fire drill was super exciting because we were in the middle of everything and then this horrible fire alarm thing comes on and we're like, I was like, oh yeah, I forgot. That was in the bulletin. We were gonna have a fire drill. Same time of the day as last time, but the kids did so much better this time, except for one was screaming. So we had to talk about why we don't scream during a fire drill and blah, 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 blah. And we got outside much quicker this time. We got to our spot much quicker. They listened much better when I called their names for roll. Everything went smoother, except for on the way back, I had students who were not staying in my line and who were jumping all over the place. And I had to keep about half of my class in from recess for a couple of minutes right outside the recess doors to discuss why it's important to stay in line. And I had them tell me, why is it important to stay in line? Why is it important to follow directions? And they told me the right answers, you know, to be safe and to know where we're going and all that stuff. And then I had one student that I had to keep behind on his own because for some whatever reason, when we were sitting on the sidewalk waiting to go back into the building, he decided to pull the sealant out from between the two slabs of sidewalk. <laughs> and I just, I just looked at him and said, why did you do that? Like, what made you want to do that? And he just thought, okay, well, this is a problem bigger than me because that's destruction of school property. And so I just took him straight upstairs to the office, went to my principal and asked her if she had a minute to discuss the, with the student what had happened. And I told her what happened. She was kind of flabbergasted too. I don't think we've ever had a student that's pulled the sealant from between two pieces of sidewalk before. This, the bad thing about that, other than, I mean, it was a bad thing by itself, but I had already talked to all of them and asked them to please keep your hands in your lap. Do not touch the grass. Do not pull the grass. Do not throw the rocks. Do not poke your neighbor, all that stuff. Just please sit quietly, wait for directions. We'll get to leave very soon, blah, blah, blah. And he did that after all of that, after all of that. And it wasn't just like a little piece. It was like the whole stinking, the whole line of sealant that they had poured in between the, the cracks of the two pieces of sidewalk that butted up against each other. There was little, a little bit of a gap. They had sealed that so that water wouldn't run under. He had pulled all of that out. What? <laughs> and it was laying over in the grass by a tree. And I'm just like, um... Yeah, this is a problem bigger than me because that, that falls under destroying things. So he's going to have to talk to the maintenance man tomorrow and try to fix it with the maintenance man. So he'll be spending probably his recess time for the next couple days fixing the sidewalk issue. I don't know what gets in their little heads. I don't understand. We read a story about being responsible and I will go get it and show I read this story to them, which I was already planning to read. It's about being responsible the worst day of my life ever. And it goes through all of the bad things that happened to this poor kid named RJ because of decisions that he made because he wasn't listening or he wasn't following directions. This was very appropriate today. I took my time through this story. I went through every scenario and I asked the students, why do you think this happened? Could this have been prevented? What could he do next time to make sure that he does not have the worst day of his life ever again. They had all the right answers. That's the thing, they know, they totally know. They just lack self-control and good decision-making capabilities. 
So that's why we have to keep training them and keep talking about it and keep reminding them every day, sometimes several times a day. I even discussed with them why it was so important to follow directions quickly, which means the first time you hear the directions, which means you have to be listening to hear the directions. And we talked about listening versus hearing, because when you hear someone, you just hear whatever. You don't know exactly what they're saying for sure. But if you're listening, it means you're focusing in on the person and you're actually, con you're actually concentrating on what they're saying. That's what I try to say. I love that this book said, let me find the page. Oh, I love this. Read this. Look right at the person who was talking to you. Say okay to the person as soon as he's through. I love that. And also before that, it said, so that you've heard what she's trying to say by nodding your head and saying, okay. And I, I even made a silly example. I said, okay, my friend in front of me, do you have a pet? Yeah. Do you have a dog? Uh-huh. Okay. So what if you were telling me all about your super cool dog and I was like this? Would you feel like I was listening to you? And he went, no. And I said, how would that make you feel if I did that while I was, while you were talking to me? And he goes, bad. And I went, yeah. I said, do you guys do that to people when they're talking to you? And they're like, no. And I said, what about when your teacher is talking to you? Are you listening? Are your eyes looking at your teacher? Are your ears open and concentrating? And they're like, oh, yeah. A little thing light bulb moment so hopefully we'll get there <laughs> we'll get better listeners we'll follow directions a little better they've gotten better at the class class yes yes because I have been like on it man on it like glue on a paper I'm just like class class yes yes stop talking and they're like I said that's what it's supposed to sound like right there that was perfect I'm so proud of you and so then they're all like woo but I'm like right on it every time because it got to class, class, yes, yes. Blah, 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 blah. Whoa, really? You're not listening to me? And so that's been a problem because I don't have time to get them quiet all day long. I'll never get anything done. We will never finish a math lesson. We will never finish a reading lesson, nothing. So that was important. So they're working on that. You can see the little kids walking by my door, getting ready for the buses. I can see them coming. Let me show you. The buses out there. The buses are here. And I think my daughter's probably going to Gamers Club. So if she doesn't show up off the bus, I'll know for sure she went. I might want to check my texts and see if she texted me. But she's probably going to go. And like I said this morning, I think I may go to Target and try to get a few things that I've kind of been needing and holding off getting. But it's kind of important to get them. So I'll go get them. And get myself together for tomorrow. Tomorrow's picture day. Super picture day. So I had them all show me their picture smiles before they left today. And they, of course, they thought that was really crazy and silly. I said, make sure you bring your best smile and wear your favorite shirt. And they're like, okay. And I even stuck a little sticker to their shirt that said pick day on it. I just hand wrote them real fast. We used to get stickers from the picture company that would say, don't forget tomorrow's picture day. And I had like a little finger with a ribbon around it, you know, tied to like, don't forget. They don't send those anymore. Well, they, they would cost money, but I'm like, as much as we spend on pictures, you would think they just throw those in to help kids remember. But before one of my students even walked out the door, when they were standing in line is when I stuck the thing on them. Before they even walked out the door, there was one on the floor. I'm like, wow, <laughs> that lasted all of two seconds. I don't know, whatever. I will send a remind and also send an email to let the parents know that tomorrow's picture day and... We'll just hope that they remember because if they don't send their money, they're just kind of out of luck because we only do pictures one time a year. In the other school district that I worked in, we did fall pictures and spring pictures. This school district only does fall pictures. So if you come in after picture day, you don't get your picture taken unless you're here um, on retake day. After that, they don't do them anymore. So you're just out of luck. You're just not in the yearbook. Your name is there with no picture. So that's kind of stinky, but that's just how they do it. All right, I'm gonna get some stuff done. It is almost time for me to leave, yay. So I'm gonna get things like turned off, my lamps and everything, get myself straightened out for tomorrow, make sure I've got everything together and get out of here. So I will either talk to you tomorrow or I'll talk to you later tonight at home, whichever happens. So bye for now.
So I read this story to them, which I was already planning to read. It's about being responsible. The worst day of my life ever. And it goes through all of the bad things that happened to this poor kid named RJ because of decisions that he made because he wasn't listening or he wasn't following directions. This was very appropriate today. I took my time through the story. I went through every scenario and I asked the students, why do you think this happened? Could this have been prevented? What could he do next time to make sure that he does not have the worst day of his life ever again? They had all the right answers. That's the thing, they know, they totally know. They just lack self-control and good decision-making capabilities. So that's why we have to keep training them and keep talking about it and keep reminding them every day, sometimes several times a day. I even discussed with them why it was so important to follow directions quickly, which means the first time you hear the directions, which means you have to be listening to hear the directions. And we talked about listening versus hearing, because when you hear someone, you just hear whatever. You don't know exactly what they're saying for sure. But if you're listening, it means you're focusing in on the person and you're actually concentrating on what they're saying. I love that this book said, let me find the page. Oh, I love this. Read this. Look right at the person who is talking to you. Say okay to the person as soon as he's through. I love that. And also before that, it said, so that you've heard what she's trying to say by nodding your head and saying okay. And I, I even made a silly example. I said, okay, my friend in front of me, do you have a pet? Yeah, do you have a dog? Uh-huh. Okay, so what if you were telling me all about your super cool dog and I was like this? Would you feel like I was listening to you? And he went, no. And I said, how would that make you feel if I did that while, I was, while you were talking to me? And he goes, bad. And I went, yeah. I said, do you guys do that to people when they're talking to you? And they're like, no. And I said, what about when your teacher is talking to you? Are you listening? Are your eyes looking at your teacher? Are your ears open and concentrating? And they're like, oh. Yeah. A little thing. Light bulb moment. So hopefully we'll get there. <laughs> we'll get better listeners. We'll follow directions a little better. They've gotten better at the class class, yes, yes, because I have been like on it, man, on it. I'm just like, class, class, yes, yes, stop talking. And they're like, I said, that's what it's supposed to sound like right there. That was perfect. I'm so proud of you. And so then they're all like, woo. But I'm like right on it every time because it got to class, class, yes, yes. Blah, 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 blah. Whoa, really? You're not listening to me. And so that's been a problem because I don't have time to get them quiet all day long. I'll never get anything done. We will never finish a math lesson. We will never finish a reading lesson, nothing. So that was important. So they're working on that. You can see the little kids walking by my door, getting ready for the buses. I can see them coming. Let me show you. The buses out there. The buses are here. And I think my daughter's probably going to Gamers Club. So if she doesn't show up off the bus, I'll know for sure she went. I might want to check my texts and see if she texted me, but she's probably going to go. And like I said this morning, I think I may go to Target and try to get a few things that I've kind of been needing and holding off getting, but it's kind of important to get them, so I'll go get them and get myself together for tomorrow. Tomorrow's picture day, uh, super picture day, so I had them all show me their picture smiles before they left today, and they, of course they thought that was really crazy and silly. I said, make sure you bring your best smile and wear your favorite shirt. And they're like, okay. And I even stuck a little sticker to their shirt that said pick day on it. I just hand wrote them real fast. We used to get stickers from the picture company that would say, don't forget tomorrow's picture day. And it had like a little finger with a ribbon around it, you know, tied to like, don't forget. They don't send those anymore. Well, they, they would cost money, but I'm like, as much as we spend on pictures, you would think they just throw those in to help kids remember. But before one of my students even walked out the door, when they were standing in line is when I stuck the thing on them. Before they even walked out the door, there was one on the floor. I'm like, wow, <laughs> that lasted all of two seconds. I don't know, whatever. I will send a remind and also send an email to let the parents know that tomorrow's picture day. And we'll just hope that they remember because if they don't send their money, they're just kind of out of luck because we only do pictures one time a year. In the other school district that I worked in, 
we did fall pictures and spring pictures. This school district only does fall pictures. So if you come in after picture day, you don't get your picture taken unless you're here um, on retake day. After that, they don't do them anymore. So you're just out of luck. You're just not in the yearbook. Your name is there with no picture. So that's kind of stinky, but that's just how they do it. All right, I'm going to get some stuff done. It is almost time for me to leave. Yay. So I'm going to get things like turned off, my lamps and everything, get myself straightened out for tomorrow, make sure I've got everything together and get out of here. So I will either talk to you tomorrow or I'll talk to you later tonight at home, whichever happens. So bye for now. Hi, I am home. It is a little after five and uh, my daughter just got the mail from the step because we had a package, a couple packages. One of the things I got was these stoppy door stops. I actually saw these on Michelle Pocket Full of Primaries blog. Now I can talk. My door does not stay open in my classroom and I got one of those regular kind of squishy door stops from Walmart and it does not work. The door just slides open or closed because it doesn't have enough grip to hold it because it's just a heavy door. So I thought I would try these. These come in a two pack off Amazon and they're about probably about $7.50 a piece because I think it was like $15 for the set. But you can use them. I looked on their website or on the website and it shows you can like hold your door open you know all the way open or you can just put this in between the door and the closure and then it'll keep it open just a little bit you can also use it to like wedge a window open like you can do it this way to keep the window up a little bit to get some breeze so i thought these would be good i could probably use one at my house anyway so and i got my favorite color lime green so i got those and then my ipsy bag came last month was a golden color and i went hey, i'm not sure i like that even though it's kind of pineapple colored, but I thought I'd just show you what I got. So here's the bag. It's just black with a little bit of texture. And inside we have some pumpkin walnut facial cleanser. Ooh, that looks cool. We've got there's a lot of stuff in here. Um, a biofresh mask with real calming herbs. Yes, that looks fun dropping stuff on the counter. Let's see what this is. And this is Smashbox. It's a good company. And it's Photo Finish Foundation Primer. Yes, I need some more of this. This looks like a mascara. Wonder Wand from Ciate. Mascara, yay. I could use mascara. And the last thing is, looks like a nail polish. Let's see if I can get it open. That end did not want to open. Well, there we go. So it's like, ooh, that's a pretty. It's kind of a plummy color. A light plum, maybe a lilac y almost. Pretty Woman Nail Polish. I think I've gotten this brand before. So that's very pretty. It'll be pretty on my toes. Yay! That's some neat stuff in here. I also forgot to tell you my thankful thought for the day. And actually, I'm going to use something from yesterday because I totally forgot about it. So. I've been showing you that we have been working on our letters and letter sounds review. And one of the things we do is we make hats with objects that start with that letter. So yesterday we were doing the letters U and L. And the L was a ladybug and the U, I had them guess and they didn't guess. They're like umbrella, unicorn, unicycle, something like that. I said, oh, we better shut the door because you're going to laugh so hard. And so it was underwear. <laughs> and of course they're like, ah, underwear, oh my gosh, ah. why are we doing underwear? I said, because it's fun and it's silly and you guys like underwear. So yeah. So, okay. So I'm at my reading table, right? I'm having reading groups and I'm being all like professional and stuff and going through the, the beginnings of reading groups. This is how we do things. Here's how we're going to do things every day when you come. This is what you're going to bring and blah, blah, blah. So I always put the hat on the board. I stick it with a magnet on the board, but only one side of it will show. So if they want to see the other side, they just ask if they can flip it over. So I have the ladybug side up because the underwear was like a no brainer. You just, you can color the band, whatever color you want. But I thought the ladybug, they might want to see how I colored my spots because they always like to color it like I did. So my dear little boy comes up to the reading table and in the most serious little face, he goes, can I see your underwear? And I went, um, <laughs> and I just started laughing so hard and he just kind of went. 
I said, did you hear what you just said? And he goes, what? And I went, honey, you just asked if you could see my underwear. And he goes, yeah. And I went, think about that for a second. And he goes, oh. And he was so embarrassed. But it was hilarious because he was not talking about my personal underwear. He was talking about the underwear that I colored for the hat. Oh, my gosh. So my thankful thought is I'm thankful for funny first grade moments because that was the keeper. I will never forget that in all my days. That was amazing, and that was probably the highlight of my entire year. <sighs> Crazy first graders. <laughs> I just had to share that with you. So thanks for hanging in there, and I'll chat with you later. Good morning. It is Thursday, Friday, Junior, September 14th. And it's picture day, and I already got my picture done. Yay, so now whatever happens, happens, and I'm okay. I won't be immortalized with whatever. So um, the little thing on my scab came off last night, so yay, just in time for picture day. Yay. Uh, had a little lipstick right there. That's great. That wasn't there for pictures. Yeah, I just did that. Um, I'll show you my outfit real quick. Sorry, it's bumpy. I'm getting a little bit of a late start. I don't want to run over the desks. Wow, let me move that. Okay. <clears throat> So I have a chevron dress on with chevron jewelry, of course, earrings. These came from Kato and this stripy bracelet and then my Alex and Annie pineapple bracelet and my Lottie Dottie's ring. Look, it's chevron too. I know, chevron and everything and a chevron watch and I realized the battery's dead, but whatever. It's just an accessory today. And then I've got these shoes on, super cute from Kato. So they kind of go. All right, and now I'll back up so you can see the whole deal. Oh, and I've got a little Cardi wrap on because it's a little chilly this morning, but it's going to get to like 80-something today, so I'll be taking this off, I'm sure. Let me back up and you can see the whole thing. Oh, and I have a silver belt right here. So it's just like a knee-length dress. Like that. You can see the silver belt a little better now. It's a short sleeve. Well, not really. I don't know what you call that. Cap sleeve, maybe? I don't know. And yeah, let's see, I have a thankful thought for today already. I am thankful for awesome involved parents. So last night I went, oh crud, I forgot to send a note home about the ice cream party on Friday because my students filled up the reward jar, the star jar, and they chose an ice cream party. Totally forgot to send a note and it's Thursday. Of course, last night was Wednesday, but it's still kind of late to send a note today. So I sent a little message on Remind Telling the parents that the kids had earned their reward party, would anyone be able to send in some ice cream on Friday for their party? Within, I'm not even kidding, 30 seconds, I had two parents. Bling, bling. I went, wow. They're like, I can, I can. Just tell me what kind and how much and when you want it. And I'm like, oh my goodness. So I sent them, you know, this is the kind we'd like and blah, 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 and what time. And then I got a couple more later. So we are set up on ice cream. And I've already got toppings from earlier, so I have some chocolate, I think strawberry, and probably some caramel. Whatever we have, we'll use. Another parent texted and asked if we wanted some toppings. I said, we would love some sprinkles and some of that spray whip. That'd be perfect, because we'll make little sundaes. And the kids are going to be so excited. Yay! So tomorrow we'll have a Sunday party. Yay! Now, the students that did not choose ice cream are a little disappointed because their, their thing didn't have the majority of the votes. But I said, that's okay. We'll have a different kind of party next time. It's all right. And so it's always whatever the majority of the class wants to do. I don't tell them what they can do or can't do. Well, I do kind of say, well, we can't go to Egypt. You know, things like that. Things that are just, I can't possibly do them. I try to do as close to what they want to do as possible. So it's going to be good. Um, I woke up with a horrible headache and it was like nightmare on a stick right through my head. And it's still there. So, oh my gosh, the kids will be here in like three minutes. But I thought, oh my gosh, it's picture day. I had a shooting headache. I didn't sleep well. I got awakened at quarter to three. Maybe went back to sleep a little after five. Then one of the cats started at the door. I'm like, just shoot me now, please. Put me out of my misery. But despite all that, it's going to be a great day. We do not have math interventions today. So I've got 35 more minutes to get some more learning in. And we're going to do ketchup and pickles time today because tomorrow we have the ice cream party. Plus, I need to do a spelling test. I didn't do one last week, but we need to do one this week. And I was hoping to maybe start mad science tomorrow, but I told the kids I'm, we might be doing something different tomorrow. 
but I wasn't sure if it was going to work out. And they were like, what is it? What is it? And I said, well, I don't want to tell you because I don't want you to be disappointed if I can't make it happen. But if we don't do it this Friday, we'll do it the next Friday. And they're like, okay. So yeah, I did not go to Target last night. I ended up just staying in my room because I realized I needed to get, whoops, if I can swing this around. I need to get, oh my goodness. <laughs> okay. Those put together. Oh, and they're still open. Did I not put something in those? Oh, shoot. Well, anyway, I thought I had them all filled in. But then my daughter texted me and said, can you pick me up early from Gamers Club? I'm like, sure, I'll be there in about 15 minutes because I don't have anything put away. So I didn't apparently finish because those drawers are still open. So I need to throw some stuff in those drawers. But it's okay because I don't need them till Monday. I told the students we would start the center drawers on Monday. So that'll be good. Um, I think that's about it. Picture day is over for me. So a PTA mom will come to our room and escort us all upstairs and I will keep them occupied and I should grab my trivia game while I'm thinking about it. I've got almost all the lights on in my room. I have the ones up here to do. I need to project the morning page on my board and breathe. <laughs> I hope you had a fabulous Friday Junior, aka Thursday, and I will talk to you later. Okay, the kids are at library. And unfortunately, our PTA mom came to get us for pictures five minutes before we needed to leave for specials. So we haven't gotten our pictures taken yet. So I'm going to have to take them right after lunch. So I hope it's not a messy lunch day. I did not look, but it's very possible my kids will be smeared in ketchup when I come get them for their pictures. So we may have a lot of cleaning faces to do and fixing hair and stuff. Whatever. It'll work out fine. They'll be cute no matter what. And we'll try to get them cleaned up as much as we can and fix them and spiff them up. We practiced our picture smiles again, and they looked really awesome. I got through a whole Go Math lesson again and also showed them fact pages, so now they kind of see the format of those, and I showed them where they will be for rotation starting on Monday, and they're excited. They also got to play a little game slash activity for our concept today. We did the additive property of addition, which is adding zero to a number, and we used Fruit Loops to start with because we always have snack at the very beginning of our math lesson with our number chat. And I had them show me five Fruit Loops and then add zero Fruit Loops. And they all went, huh? I said, well, just add zero Fruit Loops. And they're like, but I said, what do you have? And they're like, five? I'm like, exactly. Because how many is zero? We talked about how many zero was earlier. Nothing. None. Nothing. Nada. And so they're like, oh, okay. I said, let's see if it just works with five. Let's try 10 this time. Show me 10 Fruit Loops. So they showed me 10 Fruit Loops on their tray. And I said, now add zero Fruit Loops. How many do you have? And they're like, 10. I'm like, yeah. So what does zero do to a number? Nothing. Exactly. So that was weird for them <laughs> to think that it didn't change anything. And I said, isn't that cool? And they're like, yeah. So then we did a fact page on adding zero and we did it all together. They wrote the answers, but I read the problems and we went one at a time. And then they told me what the answer was after they wrote it. Then I had them do a little rolling game or a dice shaking game where they shook a die. It had the numbers on it. It was a number cube. And it said zero plus and it had a blank circle and equals a blank circle. And they had to write in what they rolled and what the sum was. Because we're really working on the math vocab. We want that to translate all the way up through math. So they hear the same vocab every year in math. So they've learned sum equals addition, addition sentence, number sentence, add end, zero, adding to, taking away. I think that's everything. Mental math, we talked about that. I'm trying to think. They learned additive property of addition, which I said, that's a fancy math way of saying adding zero to a number. And they're like, okay. And then they were kind of like, why don't they just say adding zero? I'm like, it's not fancy enough. So they're like, oh, okay, whatever. Because <laughs> some mathematician somewhere decided to call it that. I'm hearing the noises again, but it's the people next door. <laughs> so I'm not going to let it freak me out this time. But I was a little paranoid that someone was at the window. <clears throat> um, so the rest of the day is going to be lunch pictures, cleaning our snack trays because they're getting a little funky. So I have the wipes out. We just didn't have time to clean them before we left. So I said, we'll just clean them when we get back. So we'll do that when we get back from pictures. We'll put them away to dry and then we'll do rest and read 
and then we'll do reading groups, which they're super excited about. And all of my students have finally gotten to choose four books out of the classroom library. Some of them, for whatever reason, put their books back yesterday, even though I said we keep them till your next book shopping day. Because every day, one group will have a book shopping day. And it's not today. So I don't know what they're thinking. Oh, I put my books back. Oh, you need to go get them because it's not time to put them back yet. You keep them the whole week until it's your book shopping day again. Oh, even though I know I said it several times, several times. Yeah, lots of repeating in the lower grades, probably some of the upper grades too. I don't know when that ever stops. My daughter's 16 and we still have that issue. So <laughs> I don't know, but I told them today it is really important. It is your job to listen, open your ear balls. Let the sounds go in, let the words twirl around your head and tell you what to do and then follow directions. So they thought it was silly that I said ear balls. But you know, I was just trying to get their attention. When you say something weird, they perk up and go, what she just say? Did she just say ear balls? Then you got their attention and maybe they'll listen to you then. So I do crazy stuff sometimes. I'll make weird faces or I'll say strange things with strange words or I'll use strange voices or I'll jump around or whatever to get their attention so that they're focusing on me. They did better today during math because I really kept saying, what are our math rules? What are our working rules? Level zero, sit still, listen. I just kept going over them. They're on the board. I need to write them on a chart paper and have every student sign it as their promise that they will do that during work time. So we'll have to do that when I get a chance. <sighs> There just never seems to be time to do anything. Thankfully, we didn't have RTI time, which is our math intervention time. So they got a chance to catch up on things. We finally got our girl's birthday book done, whose birthday was Saturday. We've been working on this birthday book since Monday. So I said, friends, this is it. You got to get it done in the next five minutes. And they're like, five minutes? I'm like, yeah, you've had since Monday to do it. Let's get her done. So that's another thing we'll do this afternoon is read her birthday book. We may do that after recess. That'll be a nice cool down kind of activity. And then we'll talk about being ready to learn. I think that's my lesson today. Ready to learn Robert. So it's putting all those things together. We've been talking about safe, respectful, responsible. And then what does it mean to be ready to learn? So that has to do with organization, like having the supplies that you need. Sitting still and listening, following directions, focusing, all those kind of things. So we'll talk about that. That's our last little first grade expert thing that we're doing in that little resource that I talked about probably two weeks ago now that I got from TPT. I think that's about it for now. My head is just pounding. So I need to try to find a little something to eat so I can take some Excedrin and hopefully that'll knock that out before lunch. Otherwise, I'm going to be a sick puppy later because I'm starting to feel kind of nauseous and that is not a good way to be, especially when you have a room full of little children. I don't want to be sick with them. So, <clears throat> plus I don't want it to affect my mood. I don't want to be grouchy with them because my head hurts. They've done pretty well with their voice levels just because I've been on top of it all day long. And it is exhausting, friends, <laughs> exhausting. But it will pay off in the end because consistency is the key. If they keep hearing... Please raise your hand. Please raise your hand. Please raise your hand. This is how we line up. Please do it again. Blah, 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 blah. Eventually, they will toe the line. And the ones that don't are going to miss out on fun stuff. So it'll work out. All right. I'm going to go try to find something to snack on so I can take my medicine, so I can chill for a little bit. I need to do my newsletter. I am so late to the party on that. I normally do it the weekend before, but I was having my birthday fun and then resting and also doing laundry. That's super cool. And I didn't get it done. So I need to get that done for tomorrow. Hmm. Ah, I've got the rest of the day and all night, right? Sure. It doesn't take much. I just have to change a few things. And then that's basically my lesson plans for the next week. So I can go off my newsletter to make my lesson plans or I can go off my lesson plans to make my newsletter. They're the same thing. Just in a more friendly language so the parents know what we're doing. Tomorrow's an ice cream party. Yay. Ketchup and pickles day. We did ketchup day today. We didn't really do pickles day. So we'll probably do ketchup and pickles tomorrow because they didn't get to do the challenge bins. And it's early release day for a meeting. And we'll probably be talking about math intervention rotation grouping tomorrow for a long time. 
but I gotta score my tests. That's another thing to check off my list. Ah, probably be taking those home because I don't see myself getting that done. Plus, the principal still needs to talk to me about a student, about a conversation she had with a parent. It's nothing bad, so I'm not worried about it. I'm not. It's not like my that teacher. Blah blah. blah. It's nothing like that. I think she just wants to relay. Wow, <laughs> here's my conversation. It was a little woo. Yeah. So. Well, that's the rest of my day for now. I'll chat with you later. Ooh, before I forget, this little stoppy guy is amazing. Mm, my students can use it and it hooks on my door latch or the, no, it hooks on the door handle, not the latch, whatever. You know, the way you open the door, I can talk really. Oh, this headache is just making me totally brain dead more than normal. So yeah, my students, so I'm gonna let the um, leader, there's something on this one, I let the leader put it in the door to hold the door open and I'm gonna let my ender take it out of the door and hang it on the door latch, which is awesome, so that the door will close. So it's really nice, it's so easy for them to just, here's the, the bottom of the door, they just go boop, and it's done, and it sticks because this is rubber and it sticks to the tile and the laminate floor, it's so cool. So if you need a really good door stopper, I highly recommend these stoppy ones and they come in all different colors so you can be really fancy with your colors. Okay, gotta go. Here is some of the vocabulary that we went over when we did our Go Math lesson. We talked about adding zero to a number is the additive property of addition. And we talked about also adding in any order, which is tomorrow's lesson. But I kind of touched on that too because if you see our page here, that was the rolling page that we did. But in our lesson, they showed five plus zero was something and also zero plus five was something. So I kind of went over how you can add in any order. So that was what we did today. Hi, my kids are at recess. I need to make a giant to-do list because I need to make my lesson plans for next week. I need to make my newsletter. I need to make, uh, no, I need to grade the fact test and the story problem test from intervention groups so I can have that for tomorrow's meeting to be able to group the kids. I need to print out something and laminate it and cut it. Ah! I'll get it done. I'll get it done somehow. I'll take some of the stuff home. I'll do some of the stuff after school. It'll all get done. We'll make it somehow. So it'll be fine. I haven't done any of the spelling work this week. So we're going to do two pages today and two pages tomorrow and review with a spelling game and hopefully they'll be able to spell the words. They've been reading them all week, but we haven't written them a lot. So they're going to write them today and tomorrow and hopefully they'll be ready for the test. So I will talk to you later. Hey, it's the end of the day. It's almost time to go home. I need to gather all my stuff so I can take it home and work on it. I did not get a chance to grade any of the tests so I can group my kids in whatever groups they need to be in for math intervention time. So I need to grab those papers which are back there in the stack. So I'll just throw those in my bag. I did get the um, scanning cards printed out and laminated and some of them cut so that we can do Healthy Heritage tomorrow and use that little scanning app, the Easy Scan app. You can look on the App Store and download it for free. There's a free like two week trial and it's pretty cool because it keeps track of how many times around your kids have gone and then you can give them prizes according to how many times they've gone around, which is cool. <sighs> trying to think if there's something else I need to do. Still need to do my newsletter. I got some of it done but not all of it, and I don't want to rush through it and forget something or mess something up, and I want to add things to the calendar part of that because there are some things coming up and the dates that I need to add, like Family Fun Night, where we do reading, science, social studies, yeah, reading, science, and social studies activities, and the kids can bring their parents and do cool things, and our theme is Elephant and Piggy, so Ruth, shouting out Detroit Teacher Life, 20 years in the game, um, she loves Elephant and Piggy, so she would just have a blast with this night. I think I may get some, a pig nose and some little piggy ears and maybe make a little corkscrew tail to wear with my jeans and my shirt, the school shirt. We'll see how that works. Surely I can find something somewhere because I think that would be really cute and fun. Um, yes, I should probably get my stuff packed up and get out of here. I may be cooking tonight. I may not be. I don't know for sure. I still haven't done anything with that leftover barbecue chicken. I will probably do that tonight. So if I do, I will film it and show you what you can do with leftover barbecue chicken. That's very tasty and not terribly hard or time consuming. 
So stay tuned for that. If it happens, you'll see. If it doesn't, you won't see. <laughs> Pretty easy, isn't it? Picture day went well. Um, my students ended up having to be pulled from library to go because they hadn't called us until five minutes before specials time. And I said, my kids are going to specials in five minutes. And the, the nice PTA mom said, well, can you come after? And I said, well, we have lunch right after that. And she's like, oh, okay. So anyway, they ended up going during library. So it worked out fine. And then I did get two spelling practices in today. We're going to do two tomorrow. And then we'll do a spelling game and do a spelling test for the first time. And I need to print out the spelling tracking sheets. Oh my goodness. I feel so behind on everything. Wow. I'm usually much more organized than this. This year started off kind of funky. So. Speaker, please release late buses. Late buses are now loading. Thank now you. Now loading. Late buses. Ooh, all the kidlets are going to go home now. And my daughter will be coming over very soon because she rides over on those buses and gets off here and then it loads up the other kiddos and takes them home so I'm gonna pack stuff up and get myself ready to go and chat with you later and if I don't see you I'll talk to you in the morning